devastation in the dry lands of Brazil. The drought punishes everything. Farmers rioted. They did it because they were starving. One community's innovative solution. It's a phenomenon unknown to many, yet it threatens almost half of the world's land. It's called desertification, and if left unchecked, its effects are disastrous. But in the dry lands of Brazil, new hope is emerging and capturing the world's attention. Standing tall in Canindé, at the heart of the Brazilian dry lands, is one of the world's largest religious monuments. Saint Francis, the saint of the poor. At his feet, ribbons bear witness to millions of destitute pilgrims who have prayed to this revered saint, seeking the miracle of water. The first one I heard was in 1958. I was 12 years old. Napoleão Furtado, owner of a small farm in the region, has seen firsthand drought's disastrous consequences. Drought is not unusual in dry lands around the world. In this arid ecosystem, water is a scarce and precious resource. But since 40% of the earth is dry lands, in which nearly half of the world's food is produced, the farming solutions developed here could help save the planet's food supply. In northeastern Brazil, a drought can continue for up to five years. But subsistence farming used to be possible even in these harsh conditions. Há 30 anos atrás, toda essa área ela produzia. Tinha mais vegetação, não tinha essas erosão que a gente vê. But in the last three decades, things slowly changed, says farmer Francisco Neto. Slash and burn agriculture and unrestrained deforestation impoverish the soil almost to a point of no return. Nós temos uma, uma área de um açude que chegamos a produzir 420 sacos de, de feijão. E agora, por últimos anos, 2002, chegamos a produzir 30. This region, the size of France and Germany combined, and home to 25 million people, is at risk of becoming a desert. This phenomenon, when fertile farmland slowly changes into barren wasteland, is called desertification, and it's affecting drylands worldwide. Desperate farmers have even turned to violence, says villager Maria Eleni. Hundreds of thousands of others were forced to leave in search of jobs. A região aqui foi muito migrada, chegou migrada quase completa, né? Que olhava para um lado, olhava para outro e achava que tinha que ir embora e os filhos tinham que ir embora. While Francisco managed to stay, Napoleão, on the other hand, was forced to leave for a time. Eu saí um, dois anos para Fortaleza um tempo, é, mas a minha família ficou aqui. Eu estava até devendo umas continhas, né? E fui para si trabalhar em Fortaleza para pode pagar essas contas, né? Fortaleza is where the Brazilian drylands meet the Atlantic Ocean a city of beautiful tropical beaches and stark social contrast. Waves of migrants from the drylands, like Napoleon, have swelled the city's slums. In an attempt to ease the situation, the Brazilian government built massive reservoirs, like this one, the largest in Latin America. 
But desertification in the drylands created serious problems. Soil drifted into the reservoirs during the rainy season, the muddy water sickening many villagers. It gave pain in the beginning of the summer, pain in the beginning, pain in the beginning, and etc. Why? Because we drank water that was polluted. Eventually, there was so much soil in reservoirs, they slowly began to disappear. Você tinha açude que dava que tinha quatro metros de profundidade. Quando você ia observar, estava com dois metros, um metro e pouco. An initiative, partially funded by the World Bank, was launched to keep reservoirs clean, and soon expanded to also help combat desertification. The project's basic concept is simple: educate farmers on a number of low-cost, time-proven methods of land cultivation like this ancient technique designed to hold onto water. Monica Freitas, coordinator of the project, says the graded slopes prevent rainwater from drifting. Other techniques include creating underground water pockets by inserting plastic barriers into trenches and replanting trees on essential riverbeds to keep the soil in place. What's more, numerous cisterns were built to harvest rainwater for drinking. Each provides a family of five with drinking water for up to eight months. The efforts seem to be working and have caught worldwide attention. Streams and watering holes have begun to spring up. Native fauna has returned and farmers can harvest for many extra months. The communities have slowly taken over the project's coordination and planning. Leading the charge in the region is Napoleon, who proudly travels to other communities to share these techniques. Techniques that in some cases have shown so much promise that many former migrants have been able to return home. When there's only a person beating, it's difficult, but when there's more than one, two or three, the thing works. What's happening here, many believe, is a lesson for the world so that, unlike their forefathers, future generations don't depend only on hope and prayer. <laughs>